Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over why you aren't getting better at Fortnite. If you've watched some of the content on my channel before, you probably know that I like to make a lot of Fortnite tips and tricks videos. Those videos mainly give specific advice and information on how to improve at certain aspects of the game. I've uploaded videos about how to win solos, how to become a better builder, how to improve your aim, how to be a smarter player. The list pretty much goes on and on. But this video today isn't really going to contain specific tips, it's more so going to be somewhat of a general overview of what you should and shouldn't be doing if you want to get better at Fortnite. I think it's a really important topic to discuss, and it should be an interesting video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing that's crucial when it comes to improving in Fortnite is truly understanding yourself as a player. It may sound a bit odd, but trust me, this is definitely the easy part. If you're someone who's played a decent amount of Fortnite, even something like 50 games total, you should have a general idea of what your strengths and weaknesses as a player are. If you're someone who has a background in shooter games, but you haven't really played a ton of Fortnite, maybe you have really good gun skill, but you're just really bad at building. Maybe you're a smart player who does everything right in terms of positioning, but you just can't keep up in gunfights. When it comes to evaluating yourself as a player, I always recommend breaking it down into the four main categories of Fortnite skill. And at least in my opinion, those are building, gun skill, positioning, and game sense slash general IQ. But also keep in mind that you can break it down further than those four main categories if you feel that they don't tell the whole story. For example, I know players that have really good close range shotgun aim, but also really bad long range AR aim. I know players that are great at building in open field build battles, but are horrible at building in any kind of close quarters area. So taking a minute to really think about your biggest strengths, weaknesses, and everything in between is the first step towards seeing meaningful improvement. Now after you've done that, you want to specifically focus in on the weaknesses, and this is where things get interesting. Once you've identified the things that are most holding you back as a player, you basically have two different options of how to deal with those things. The first option is to simply do everything in your power to avoid situations that involve your weaknesses. For example, let's say you're a player that really struggles with close range shotgun accuracy, and that's definitely a really common weakness. Well then it would make sense to avoid landing hot drop cities like Tilted or Retail, or at the very least, avoid the biggest central buildings. So instead of landing Bertha or Big Brick where you're almost guaranteed to get involved in multiple shotgun fights, you'd instead land somewhere like Basketball, Pawn Shop, or even Corner Brick. And once you leave your starting city, you'd utilize tactics like flanking and third partying to turn the majority of your fights into safe, medium to long range AR battles. You may even want to dedicate an inventory spot to a weapon like the heavier silent sniper, so you have the potential to get some long range burst damage and one shot knock slash eliminations. So just accepting that you have a weakness and revolving your playstyle around it is a legitimately solid strategy. If you can master that art, you could definitely be a really good player. However, by accepting and avoiding your weaknesses, you're basically limiting your skill ceiling as a Fortnite player. It's like a center in basketball who plays really great defense and rebounds really well, but pretty much can't do anything on offense other than dunk. Are there a few centers like that in history that have had really great careers, made all-star games, and even some all-NBA teams? Yeah, absolutely. But nobody looks at a guy like DeAndre Jordan or Clint Capella as an all-time great player. That may sound pretty stupid and totally unrelated to Fortnite, but it really is the same idea. If your weaknesses in Fortnite involve skills that are really important to being successful, you're only going to be able to get so far by simply avoiding them. I mean, just take a look at the Fortnite pros, which are a perfect example of this. Can you think of a single pro player that's average or even just slightly above average at any major skill in Fortnite? The answer to that question is most certainly no. Because if a pro player was even just average at building or had average aim, well then they wouldn't be a pro. Now I'm sure at least a few of you guys out there were about a comment bringing up Nick Merckx. 
And that's most likely due to the fact that, for a long time, Nick's building was a pretty major weakness in his game. However, I think he's also a perfect example of the model for improvement. Earlier on in his Fortnite career, Nick kinda had that avoiding weaknesses mindset that I talked about a little earlier. His gun skill, positioning, and game sense were so unbelievably elite that he was able to still be a pretty insane player with only average building. However, as time went on and he started competing against other pros on a regular basis, he realized that in order to keep up, he couldn't just continue to totally ignore his major weakness. So, what exactly did he do about that? He changed a bunch of his binds and settings, put an emphasis on getting in build fights in-game, and practiced his building a bunch off-stream as well. And that led to a huge overall improvement in his skill. Is his building still a weakness when compared to his strengths? Absolutely. And he's also one of the greatest players in all of Fortnite when it comes to putting himself in situations which involve his strengths and don't involve his weaknesses. But if you watch Nick now compared to even just a few months ago, you would see that it's a night and day difference. As I was making this video, I actually stumbled upon another perfect example from a pro Fortnite player of the importance of focusing on and improving your weaknesses. Here's a tweet from Sam, a pro player from Team CLG. He says, Two to three months ago, my aim was a weaker part of my game. I committed daily to grinding and improving it. I'm at a level finally where I feel confident, 50 50 ing only now. So that serves as proof that even a more mechanical based skill like aim can be significantly improved if you put the work in. There's plenty of videos available on my channel and the rest of YouTube that should steer you in the right direction for improving pretty much every skill possible. So once you've identified the specific skills that you need to work on, you need to understand that legitimate improvement is not going to be something that happens overnight. Therefore, you need to make sure that you're making the most out of your time when playing the game. Some people have no problem or even enjoy sitting in creative mode and practicing skills like building an aim. And with the variety of creative mode courses that are available, it can actually be pretty fun. But on the other hand, I totally understand if you're somebody that wants to spend all of your playing time actually playing the game. And if you're one of those people, there are a few things that you need to make sure to avoid if your main goal is improvement. The first and most important thing is that you need to avoid losing focus while playing. This basically happens when your mind goes on autopilot and you're just going through the motions while playing the game. I would compare Fortnite autopilot to losing focus while reading a book. Another kinda odd comparison, but just hear me out here. I'm sure everybody watching this video knows what it's like to be forced to read some kind of boring novel or section of a textbook for one of your classes in school. And early on, when you're actually focusing 100% on the reading, your mind processes all the information and you'll probably understand and retain most of it. But then later on, when your mind inevitably starts to wander and you start focusing on other things, you can read an entire page and not actually process any of it. So you basically ended up wasting however long it took you to read it, and if you actually care enough, you'll probably just have to reread the entire page anyway. It's the same thing with Fortnite. When you go on autopilot and your mind starts to wander on to other things, you aren't going to play smart, and you definitely aren't going to improve. Now luckily, since it's a fun video game, it should be a lot easier to stay focused on than a biology textbook or Of Mice and Men, but it definitely still happens. The much more common mindset issue that you need to avoid if you want to improve at Fortnite is losing composure. And in the video game and gambling world, the term used to describe losing composure is getting tilted. When you get frustrated and angry with specific things happening in the game, you play stupid. It happens to everybody. And when you play stupid, you get a bunch of unnecessary deaths, build bad habits, and you definitely don't learn anything. You'll pump someone square in the face for 40 damage, get angry it wasn't higher, and then just sprint towards them like a madman. I know it's a lot easier said than done, but not getting angry and tilted is so crucial when it comes to playing and improving consistently. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. This video was about how to improve as a Fortnite player, so I want to know, which Fortnite season do you think you improved the most in? Were you someone who played and improved early on, like in Season 2 or 3? Or were you more of a late bloomer who's improved the most in a more recent season? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.